Okay. All right. Hello. Do you like my sign? I think it's from an Amazon box. I don't know. All right. Welcome to the happy half hour. Hi. I hope you all can hear me because I was having trouble earlier with the audio, so I don't know if you can or not. So we'll see what happens. It is Friday of Memorial Day weekend. I have my Capri Sun. I hope you are all responding accordingly with your beverages of choice. This is a Memorial Day episode. I won't keep you long because I know you want to be with your loved ones and your family members. So um, again, I'm going to just give a little quick sip. Oh, good. Capri Sun. Yes, Mary Jean. Um, I do want to, as more of you get here, mention um, that since this is a Memorial Day episode, I do want to mention a couple of names that are near and dear to me personally. And I'd love it if you could, if you wanted to, you could put um, the name of your loved one um, in the comments section, um, those who have served in honor of this weekend, we can give shout outs to them. So uh, the first person I want to shout out again, these are my loved ones, people I care about. And um, so if you have anybody you want to give a shout out to, put it in the chats so we can um, honor them for Memorial Day this episode. The first person I want to shout out to is Rocco Moreto, Donald Tech, Robert Langer, and Dominic Serio. So those are the people that I um, love and care about, and they must be having some party up in heaven, boy. So we want to um, thank them for their service. And again, if you have people or loved ones that you would like to put in the chat, please feel free to do so. This is a special Memorial Day episode. We want to thank them for their service, and we will have a special Memorial Day quick Memorial Day quiz, and then we can get on to other things. And oh, look, the tiger's celebrating too. There he is. Um, okay, for if you have teens in your life, tonight is going to be very fun. The teens in your life, there is a game night on Zoom and you want to register at nmerricklibrary.org. Register at the North Merrick Library. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, Billy, I did get ink. We have Andy to thank for the ink. Yes, we got the toner, so we want to thank him for that. Um, tonight is the Lit Night Inn, which is just a fun game night, and it's for teens. Open to teens in grade six and up, and you register at the North Merrick Library um, website, nmerricklibrary.org, and you can do that tonight at 7 p.m. So that sounds really fun. If you have any teens or um, young people who might want to take advantage of that, go right ahead. And the other thing is I want to show you what I looked like this morning when I got up because I'm having trouble keeping my roots um, done and I also have a problem with the humidity here. So when I got up this morning, this is what I looked like. This is me looking in the mirror. I don't know if you can see that. Yep, there I am. That's Carolyn looking in the mirror. That's it. That's what I got. So hopefully, I don't know that I've improved any, but it is, my hair is getting much bigger. And by the end of the, look at all this, by the end of this, uh, what we're doing here, I can only imagine what it's going to look like. Yes, Denise, this is me looking in the mirror. My makeup is not quite as good now as it was this morning, but that's, what can you do? So like I said at the beginning, for those of you who are just joining us, this is a Memorial Day um, episode or whatever we want to call it. And um, we are honoring all our loved ones who have served. If you have somebody in particular you would like to 
mention, please put the name in the chat. I'll be saying this a few times, so I'm sorry if I um, keep repeating myself. I am ready with my Capri Sun. I don't know if you saw our amazing Facebook page today, but Billy's Boredom Busters did, right? Everybody's doing at-home celebrations. Everyone's doing these parades. He created, Billy of Billy's Boredom Busters created a birthday sign that you can stick in your lawn and just, it is amazing. I would not be able to do it. I can barely get this to happen. This is scratch tape, but I do my best. And you can watch all of that wear on our TV channel, YouTube. You can watch the story times. You can watch all the crafts that the children's and YA are doing. You can watch uh, back episodes of the uh, Happy Half Hour and the Billy's Boredom Busters. So you can check into all of that. Uh, what else do I want to say in case the hair gets bigger? This is me from this morning. So I do want to shout out again, Dominic Sirio, Rocco Moretto, Donald Tack, and Robert Langer. Those are the people that are near and dear to my heart. And I wanted to give them a mention today because as we celebrate um, Memorial Day weekend. Don't forget to check out our amazing Pinterest page. I know you guys are doing this because the clicks to this are amazing. So if you're looking for curated content, what book you should read next, what book you're doing your Zoom book discussion for, please go onto our Pinterest page. Look how nice that looks. Lovely, lovely. This is what I look like, okay? Can I tell you? Shout out to the lady who's in her kitchen right now. I don't know if she's watching, but if she's cooking dinner. Hello, Diane. Diane, look at me this morning. This is what I look like, see? I don't know that I've improved much since then. But speaking of book discussions, if you are looking for book discussion content, go to the Pinterest page. Speaking of book discussions, I'm hosting a Zoom book discussion on June 3rd at 7 p.m. That is a Wednesday night. At least it was the last time I looked. And we are doing In the Time of the Butterflies by Julia Alvarez. So that's going to be fun. You can find the link to register for that and they just sort of send you a um, Zoom invite. I'm going to start our Memorial Day quiz. Are you ready? Okay. And for those of you who are here, thank you for spending uh, a short amount of time with me tonight instead of sitting outside, although now it's getting cloudy. We had a lovely day today. So um, thank you for being here with all the other options you have to watch. I appreciate that you're here. And before I start the quiz, I'm gonna take a sip of my Capri Sun. Capri Sun, Dr. Pepper, you gotta have both in the house because you never know what the weather's gonna be. Okay, so um, what do we got here? Yes, I got ink. Diane is here, Denise. Okay, where did Memorial Day originate? Where did Memorial Day originate? Is it A, Waterloo, New York, B, Watermill, New York, or C, Watertown, New York? Hello, Evelyn. I'm always glad to see you. Um, Evelyn, this is our Memorial Day episode. So I'm asking my first question. And if I remember the last time, you have to wait for me to answer, to give you your choices. But if you know it, by all means, put it in the chat. Where did Memorial Day originate? Waterloo, New York, Watermill, New York, or Watertown, New York? So if you know the answer, please put it in the chat. Uh, last week, I talked about RB Digital. You know what's great about RB Digital? When I opened up my phone today, I don't know if you could see it. There it is, your issue of Good Housekeeping is now ready to check out. So that's what it looks like when you get the confirmation. The magazine's ready, it's, it just hit the newsstands. It's supposed to come out June 1st. I got it today. This issue talks about um, Q 
keeping things clean, keeping your house clean. I'm not interested in that. <laughs> but it's nice to know that that is there for those of you who do. I mean, of course I want a clean house, I just don't want to do it. Okay, so our question was, where did Memorial Day originate? Um, I know, I know we don't know much about this topic. It's very interesting. So it actually originated in Waterloo, New York, which is an interesting fact because like Evelyn is saying, we don't know much about that, but I do have some information about that because I'm a librarian and it's what we do. It is what we do. And I'm gonna ask the next question, which then I'll get into. So the answer is Waterloo. You got Waterloo. Time for your Capri Sun. And if you didn't get Waterloo, it's also time for your Capri Sun. We're, you know, whatever you feel like doing. Celebrate, have a sip, all good. Yes, we did have a winner. We, I think we did have a winner. Denise, hooray, Denise. You know what? I think we'll get Billy from Boredom Busters to give you a sign. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. I think we should get Billy on that right now. Billy, if you know Denise, maybe you can make a sign for her. Just a suggestion. She's like the most lovely lady. And I think, why not? <laughs> why not? Okay, so yes, the answer was Waterloo, but here's another question. Who has who has been who has been credited as being the first to declare that shops were closed? to honor the soldiers coming back from the Civil War. So this is 1866. Who was the first person to declare, A, <laughs> yeah, Billy's making the sign now. Denise, you're such a lucky winner. Uh, who's the first to declare that shops were closed to honor the soldiers coming back from the Civil War? Was it President Abraham Lincoln? Was it Henry Wells? Or was it General Robert E. Lee? Now, I will tell you that this was not something, again, like Evelyn said, it's not something talked about very much, or if it was, I don't remember learning it, but I went to school so long ago, I don't remember if we talked about this. So we'll come back to that. Um, there was a book news today, book news today. This week, actually, there was some book news. And um, <laughs> I will share what, messages came through on my phone shortly. Um, there was book news today. Some of you will know what this reference is to. Oh, so we're already getting questions. Lincoln, Henry Wells, or Robert E. Lee, uh, who was being credited as the first one to honor the soldiers coming back from the Civil War. This guy was in the news today, well, this week, but why was he in the news? Let's see if you can figure out book news regarding this man, Donald Sutherland. Don't know if you're gonna know it, but this came out this week. Suzanne Collins prequel to The Hunger Games. And it actually starts with the origin story of President Snow. Now, many of you know, many of you may not know that I, I think he is just the best. Unbelievable. I think Donald Sutherland can do no wrong. Yes, he's Jack Bauer's father. It was very hard for me to dislike President Snow because I like Donald Sutherland so much. But the origin story for the prequel to The Hunger Games, which is called The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, talks about 18-year-old um, President Snow and what his life was like, which I think is amazing. And to tell you, and so when I think about President Snow, right, we think about this guy, I think who could play him? Who would be the first person I thought of to be President Snow? I don't know if you know who that is. Draco Malfoy, that's the guy I think that they should get to play, although he's probably too old now, but I don't know, but that's the person I thought he popped into my head right away. So I think Draco could play, oh boy, now this is gonna work. There it is. Draco could play President Snow. It's not as easy as it looks, people. It is not as easy as it looks. But, so that's that. 
um, and I will talk to you about that in just a second. Yes, he's in the movie. <laughs> he is in the movies. Donald Sutherland is in the movies. Um, four years ago, three or four years ago, uh, my daughter and I went to see Arthur Miller's The Crucible. And we happened to be waiting outside, Broadway show, just waiting outside. And all of a sudden this cab pulls up and something made me turn around and look at the cab. I don't really even remember what it was. My daughter could probably remind me what it was, but when I looked, who was getting out of the cab? Donald Sutherland. I promptly turned away and walked right into one of those planters that keep the little trees on the side. I walked right into it because I was not paying attention to where I was going and she prevented me from tripping and falling. Yes. He has a son named Kiefer Sutherland. Yes, that is exactly right, Evelyn. So um, I'd like both of them very much. If you watch 24, Jack Bauer, he was the guy. So because Donald Sutherland gets out of this cab, he goes into the box office of the very same show we're going to see, and I ran inside and I took a photograph of him. That's <laughs> the back of his head <laughs> because I didn't want to get arrested. Um, and have the police, yes, come after me. So I, I, we snuck back in and we took a picture and then we were just sort of, you know, tr me trying to be nonchalant is just not a good thing on any level. I could never be a stakeout person. I could never be a decoy. I don't have a poker face. I'm just not good at any of that. So, hey, Jean Marie. So I'm terrible at that. So when this happened, and of course, I'm in the vestibule with my daughter, and I'm like, we got to be natural. We got to act natural. He turned around. I did not act natural. Well, though, I shouldn't say that. I acted natural for me. <laughs> it's just, just not good for anybody. But he came over, and he started chatting, and then he started Julia, look, my daughter has to take a picture with him and he sort of took her hand and he said, oh, I would love to take a picture with you, but then everybody's good. He was unbelievably gracious. He is, in my mind, he was nine feet tall. And somehow we kept our, I kept it together. And it was the funniest, funniest thing. But, so I am completely starstruck. And he starts to get his tickets and he gets his on hold tickets or whatever he was doing. So we go into the show. Chris, Julia and I go into the show and we get our seats and we sit down and I'm just like, oh, he's going to think I'm following him. But let's, so we walk away and go online. <laughs> so we go, we get our seats. Julia's on the aisle. I'm sitting next to her. Who's on the other end of the aisle? Aisle seat, just the row. And then Julia... I mean, he must have been like, get these people away from me. And then he had these lovely trousers and he crossed his legs and he had these really nice socks on. And I don't even really remember what the show was about. I mean, I know it was The Crucible and I think Sosha Ronan was in it. That's it. I got nothing else because this was happening and this was happening. And like I said, if there's any way for me to embarrass myself, I will find it. And Janet knows that because Billy knows that, <laughs> Denise knows that, Big Bill knows, anybody on this chat knows that I will find it and I will hit a home run with how I embarrass myself. So yes, so that's what I thought of when they announced the Hunger Games novel was out and they were talking about 18 year old President Snow. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if they got Draco Malfoy to play, they have the same color hair, why not? And the great thing about this book right now, the brand new one, is that it is on Hoopla, but the audio version only. So you can check that out if you want to try an audio book. What the heck not? I would try it too. Um, the good thing to know about this new book. Oh, actually, let me give you the answer to that question before. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. What did I do with it? Oh, here it is. Uh, who has been credited? with declaring shops are closed for a day to honor the soldiers coming back from the Civil War. The answers were, or your choices were, President Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, Henry Wells, or Robert E. Lee. The answer was, or is, Henry Wells. Why is that important? I'm gonna tell you. 
because it's a lot to read. I'm only going to read you the highlights. Um, Memorial Day began in the summer of 1865 when a local drugstore owner, Henry Wells, mentioned to some of his friends that he should, while he was, you know, congratulating veterans for returning, he wanted to do something to memorialize those who served and were not there to come back to be with their families. So he wanted to place flowers on um, the graves of those, those who served and, and didn't come back. And that's how the tradition started. So it became official in 1866 in Waterloo, New York. Now, if you're watching Jeopardy and that question comes up, you will absolutely, you will say, what is Waterloo, New York? And what year, what, what is 1866? So you're going to know these things. And then you're going to say, what is Henry Wells? What did he do for a living? He was a prominent drugstore owner. So he was a druggist. Who? Who's better than Happy Half Hour? You know what? I'm going to have a little celebratory for that. So, and of course, if you're just joining us, our Tiger King is celebrating as well. Okay, now, the other good thing to know, besides the fact that Hoopla will have this book on, it's on audio right now, and you can watch it, uh, listen to it, and it's also on Overdrive, so you can do that too. But, yes, it's about President Snow, and it's already confirmed that an adaptation of the prequel is in the works and it will be directed by the same director who directed the last three movies. So the Hunger Game movies. So that's amazing. And um, there's all kinds of things. And she did a great interview with David Levitan, who is a young adult author, but he, he's written a couple of, of adult novels as well. He, and Susan, Suzanne Collins doesn't do a lot of interviews. She's a little reclusive that way. But he asks her, what is it like to go back to the world that you built and then predate it by 64 years? And she said she really enjoyed going back to the time, to the earlier version of the town, which was Pan Am or the country or whatever, during the reconstruction. And she said that it was a lot like period of the Civil War, uh, after the period of the Civil War in the United States. So she's actually using that um, Civil War, post-World War II era in Europe to talk about people trying to rebuild. So that's what the story is about. It's about rebuilding and um, how to live their daily lives in, in the midst of all this rubble and food shortages and, and uh, infrastructure. So that's how she was able to pull to do this book. You see what I did there? We went from Memorial Day, commemorating our loved ones, and now we're talking about how she used that experience of loved ones coming back to write this book. Again, it's on Hoopla in the audio version, so I would check that out. Um, yes, The Leisure Seeker with Donald Sutherland and Helen Mirren. I'll see anything Donald Sutherland is in probably more than twice or three times. Um, he was in Animal House, plays the English teacher. That's good. We like that. So what else did I want to... Oh, next question, Civil War. Okay, so we know it was in Waterloo, New York. We know that it was Henry Wells, the drugstore owner, who came up with this uh, amazing way to commemorate our loved ones. And ready? Here we go. In 1866, the Waterloo townspeople commemorated their fallen soldiers. Before it was called Memorial Day, what was it called? I didn't know this. This is a learning experience. Every, every HHH happy half hour is a learning experience. What was it called? Was it called Remembrance Day, A? Was it called Recollection Day, B? Or was it called Decoration Day, C? So in 1866, before it became Memorial Day, they called it which one of these? A, Remembrance Day, B, Recollection Day, or C, Decoration Day. Okay, so we'll see. We've got some answers coming in. Mary Jean says Decoration Day. 
Okay, well, we'll find out. But so I would ask you again, after we have a little more Capri Sun, let's see if you remember what the answers are. Um, just a reminder, join me on Zoom, June 3rd, for the book discussion of In the Time of the Butterflies. Classic, amazing, amazing book. I'm so happy to revisit it. And then because I don't, who doesn't want to see Elizabeth Strout in their daily, in their daily life? Look, there she is. Pulitzer Prize winner. And the lady next to her, probably there's an order of protection. Okay, but that's okay. Um, if you are just joining me and you didn't get a chance to see, oh my God, what a mess. I... Took a picture of, I took a selfie this morning uh, just to show off my gray hair and my um, humidity hair. And this is what it looked like. This is my selfie. See, my arm is outstretched to take the picture. Pretty good. That's good, right? Nice selfie. Pretty good selfie. Okay, so we have some answers coming in. Oh, look at that. All right. Oh, Irene. How are you, Irene? Have a little Capri Sun. Oh my gosh, Irene, I'm always so glad to see you. You know that. Uh, okay, so we've got Mary Jean saying Decoration Day. We've got Irene saying Remembrance Day. <laughs> Evelyn says you don't look like that at all. Evelyn, can I have your eyeglasses, please? Because that would just make my day so much better. Um, and Evelyn is also saying Decoration Day. That's what my parents called it. Well, that's very interesting. I did not. I think that's amazing. Um, so with that, the answer to the question is, in fact, Decoration Day. So in 1866, before it was Memorial Day, they called it Decoration Day. Now, Evelyn, if you want to throw something in the comments there, like, did you ask them why or did you say no mom no one's you know nobody calls it that or i'm just curious what your um experience was with that if you could throw that in the oh mary jean says her parents also called it that i had no idea i never heard that expression before referring to um memorial day so it shows you what i know i'm a librarian i, I didn't know that i had to look it up because i'm too busy doing what i'm too busy <laughs> following <laughs> this guy around <laughs> and getting in trouble. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, so yes, decoration day. Um, let's see if Evelyn is responding here. I had bigger fish to fry than to ask that. I'm sure. I'm sure. But it's it, it <laughs> exactly. Actually, I'm going to give you a little laugh out loud sign here um, because that is true. Uh, I would never have never have thought to do that. So. Okay, ready? Long Islanders, here we go. What is the largest national cemetery called? The largest national cemetery. Is it called Waterloo National Cemetery, George Washington National Cemetery, or Calverton National Cemetery? So the largest uh, national cemetery in the country. Is it Waterloo National, George Washington National, or Calverton? national so oh evelyn says her dad was in world war ii um evelyn i don't know you may have come in late but i did have a um a little commemoration for uh those who um served and are i don't know hopefully you're, i don't know if your dad is still with us or not but i did mention some people who are near and dear to me and some of the members of our merrick library staff um, and I mentioned them earlier. And um, so I mentioned Dominic Sirio, Rocco Moretto, Donald Tack, and Robert Langer. And these are the people who are near and dear to uh, me and some Merrick Library staff members who have served. And I'm sure, um, yeah. So um, I said if anybody wanted to throw a name in the chat, we could sort of just, you know, a little way to memorialize them. Um, let them know we're thinking of them. Okay, so um, Calverton, we're back to that. 
largest national cemetery. Is it Waterloo National, George Washington National, or Calverton National? The answer to that is Calverton National Cemetery is the largest national cemetery. Now, Long Islanders, where is it located? Where is Calverton National Cemetery located? I don't know. Take a guess. Take a guess. What else? What else did I want to show you? Don't forget this. Don't forget Hoopla. You can get your audio book for this. Yes, I'm just being informed. I left out two names. Um, Carl Bucking and Dudley Bucking also we're going to. Oh, and here we have Jean Marie saying Robert Glover, my dad, the Korean War. And I mentioned Donald Tack, which is my father-in-law, also the Korean War. So for those who are no longer with us, um, you know, it's nice to... Um, Battle of the Bulge, that is uh, Carl Bucking and Dudley Bucking. Thank you, Andy Tech. He's a good guy. He watches. Um, I think my dad is out there watching too, so hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. So where is Calverton located? Anybody have a guess? Calverton is located. Let's see, we got a message here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I am going, I'm not sure. He may have walked away from the um, computer, but maybe we will ask him that question um, right now. And if Andy is watching, um, he should pay attention to that. So I will, um, I'm going to guess that he's going to say no, but um, <laughs> I'm telling him right now to check the chat. <laughs> that was hilarious, Denise. That is very funny. Um, So I will tell you what that's in reference to shortly, but Long Island, uh, Calverton is located on Long Island in Calverton. You should check the chat because you got a response. <laughs> um, and you will want to, Wading River, I, you know what, I'm not exactly sure what town Calverton is in specifically. Do you know, Andy? It's in it is in Calverton. So I guess that is actually the name of the town. I'm always not sure out there what it is. I know it's next to other places, but I don't know enough. Um, I'm from Brooklyn. Listen, I, when I, so I just know the LIE and the Southern state and how do I get to Montauk or Orient? That's all I got. So it is located in Calverton and what, let's see if anybody remembers at the very beginning, where did I say the first Memorial Day, which is actually called Decoration Day, where was the first Memorial Day celebrated? In what town of New York? Waterloo, 1866, and it was called Decoration Day. And the name of the person, the drugstore owner, Henry Wells. I probably won't remember Henry Wells, but maybe you will. So what else? Um, this is me this morning. This is my selfie. Big hair. Lots of gray. I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to show you that. Tonight, 7 p.m., go over to the NorthMerrickLibrary.org uh, North and, and if you have a teen, they can play a really fun game night. So get in on that. What else can I tell you? I already did. Make sure you watch. Our YouTube channel, Billy did an amazing board, boredom busters uh, where he showed how to make a lawn sign. And why is that important? Because a shout out to all of those who graduated this week and last week. And 
we actually hosted a graduation here and we had a big parade. I want to say there were 12, 13 cars. I don't remember, but I told all the neighbors to shut their windows because there'd be some honking. And there was a overstuffed teddy bear involved, but it was my daughter's college graduation, which was amazing. And we celebrated that. And that was really fun. And um, Billy may or may not have come by with Denise and a gigantic teddy bear, which, by the way, Billy, someone thought that there was somebody inside the teddy bear. They didn't realize it was a stuffed animal, which I think is hilarious. So again, I want to wish everybody a very uh, happy and safe Memorial Day weekend. Oh, thank you, Evelyn. Congrats. Yes, it was really nice. It was weird to watch it on Zoom. We did a, it was actually on YouTube and we all watched it. But what was interesting is that one of the guest speakers said, you know, just think about this, parents, you're actually able to sit next to your loved one instead of sitting up in the balcony all squashed in a tiny little seat. <laughs> you can't really see, you know, I can usually find my kids anywhere. So I'm sure I would have found her in that big crowd. It was supposed to be at Radio City Music Hall, which would have been amazing. But so we're rain checked that, but we were all together. And then um, this parade of cars went by. And it was great because she was surprised. So that was really nice. I posted some pictures on Facebook. So if you follow me on Facebook, there were some pictures there. And um, it, was, it was pretty nice. So again, if you're missing anything, look it up here. What am I reading? Oh, I am reading right now the new... Um, last week I was telling you about all these thrillers and horrible serial killer type books that I tend to read. Um, there is a book that's out right now that I finished and loved called These Women by Ivy Pagoda. Actually, I'm going to read it. It's called These Women by Ivy P-O-C-H-O-D-A. I think I'm spelling her last name correctly. Um, and it's very good. It is very good. It is sort of a murder mystery. Um, it's, a, it's a little graphic, but it's, I'm grisly maybe. Um, but don't ask me. I'm not. I'm not the right judge of that because those things don't bother me. But I do. Oh, don't forget. Here's the Good Housekeeping magazine that just came in for me from RB Digital, which is amazing. And the book I am reading right now is the newest Jennifer Weiner, which I think is called Big Summer. Um, I think that's what it's called, Big Summer. So, and I'm enjoying that one very much right now. And I'm, I'm not a, um, I, I'm not, I don't read a lot of Jennifer Weiner, but somebody said it was great and I recommended it to me. So I will be reading that. And you can throw some of your reading suggestions in the chat before we go. Again, I want to give a shout out to all those who served. I'm going to go back into the Robert Glover, Carl Bucking, and Dudley Bucking. Let me see. There was somebody else on here that I missed. <laughs> Mayor Jean says, I am a child. Yes, because I did not know about Decoration Day. Amazing. So we've got Robert, Robert Glover, Carl Bucking, Dudley Bucking, uh, Dominic Sirio, Rocco Moretto, Donald Tack, and Robert Langer. And Evelyn is saying Exile Music by Jennifer Steele was really good. I've heard good things. I have not read it. So, folks, have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Um, be safe. Be careful. Wear your masks. Just keep yourself safe and wear your masks. And keep other people safe and wear your masks. And thanks to all who served. Thank you all for joining me today. Um, stay safe. Stay healthy. Thanks to all of our Merrick Library patrons. You guys are amazing. We really miss you. And I hope to see you on the Zoom. Keep following us on Facebook. We've got all kinds of things on Facebook for every age group. Uh, we've got the story times for the little ones. Uh, we have a young adult librarian, Miriam, who's constantly posting things about 
you know, books, uh, choices for young adult librarians. We've got crafty librarians. The children's librarians are always putting crafts up there. Tonight is game night. It's a Zoom thing. You can get in there and take advantage of that, which is really fun. Um, thank you, Denise, and thank you, Janet. Mwah! Love you guys so much. One more for the road um, before we... Please be safe. Please stay healthy. Thanks to the Merrick Library Board of Directors. You guys are amazing. Thanks to Director Dan and Assistant Director Diane, to everybody in um, all the staff members. You guys are great. Have a good weekend. Kathy Wither. Oh, I have another, I have a book for you. All right, well, next time. Um, here's my selfie. And on that note, I'm gonna wish everybody a very safe Memorial Day. Right? Last minute comments, throw them in. And if you wanna know more about that Donald Sutherland story, I can, I, if you missed it, let me know and I'll, oh, I'll say it again. But if you do want to see, I don't know what I did with it. I kind of throw the, look at that guy. But I do have a, I have a picture of him. Oh, I can't find it now. It's like, it, honestly, it's like Felix the cat with his bag of tricks. Hold on here. Oh, <laughs> you wish you here. You know what? I, I honestly, I, Irene, I wish my hair looked that good because I can't get it to look. It looked that good this morning and look what happened since. Um, I can't find that picture of the back of Donald Sutherland. Here it is. That is the back of Donald Sutherland. Right, no, this one. That's Donald Sutherland's head. And he smelled great because we were standing right next to him. He did not call the cops. Um, so that was good. And there is more to that story. And that's, I don't look half as good as that. All right, folks, thank you all for joining me. I will see you next week. Remember, if you aren't registered for the book discussion, everyone is welcome. You just have to go in and click the link and you'll get a response email telling you, you know, when, where to be and what to do and you just have to have your computer ready to go. So, I'm taking my tiger and my color pictures and all my American flags, and I will see you all soon. Dad, if you're still watching, I hope your connection is working. I love you, and I will probably talk to you in about five or six minutes. Okay, so I'm taking my last sip of Capri Sun. Enjoy your weekend, hang out your flags, and um, wear your masks. All right, talk to you later. Bye. Oh, someone just came in at the last second. I'm trying to get you out of here early tonight. If there's anything you want to add before I say goodbye, throw it into the comments. If you could see my kitchen table right now, I've got paper everywhere. Everywhere. And yes, color ink, as Billy pointed out. Oh, I know what I wanted to say about Billy. He made a survivor necklace on Billy's Board and Busters. And last week, if you missed it, I called it the Infinity Necklace from the movie Lost, but it actually has nothing to do with Infinity Necklace on Lost. It is called a Immunity Necklace on Survivor. So it shows you what I know. All right. See you guys. See you next week.